Hello and welcome to this overview of security features present in the STM32U5. The STM32U575 and U585 family of devices is designed with a comprehensive set of security features, some of which are based on standard ARM Trust Zone technology. These security features simplify the process of evaluating IoT devices against security standards. They also significantly reduce the cost and complexity of software development for OEM and third-party developers by facilitating reuse, improving interoperability, and minimizing API fragmentation. This module describes the following key security features. Secure boot, thanks to the unique boot entry and hypertext area or HDP features. Improved resource isolation using trust zone and privileged mode, extended to securable IOs, memories, and peripherals. Enhanced lifecycle management with readout protection or RDP. It includes debug protection and optional password-based RDP regressions. Dual developer firmware distribution scheme using Trust Zone, on-the-fly decryption and RDP 0.5. On-the-fly decryption of encrypted images stored in external flash memory with associated secure firmware installation. In other modules, you find the following information. Enhanced secure storage, Cryptographic acceleration, including side channel protection when manipulating secrets, active temper and protection against temperature, voltage, and frequency attacks, secure firmware installation, certification CC level 3 and PSA level 3. This line summarizes the boot options when Trust Zone is enabled. When boot lock equals 1, the boot address is unique and defined by secure user option sec book ADD0, whatever the other parameters. When RSS CMDR is non-null and boot lock equals zero, boot in root security services or RSS is performed. And when RDP is greater than zero, the boot code must be located in a secure area. When trust zone is disabled, only the center of the table is relevant with non-secure NS boot ADD zero replacing sec boot ADD zero and non-secure NS boot ADD one replacing the RSS fixed address. In embedded flash, there are two write protection areas per bank controlled by non-volatile configuration bits. These bits cannot be modified when the corresponding unlock configuration bit is zero. Unlock bits can be set only when regressing from RDP level one to level zero. When trust zone is enabled in the device, embedded flash features the following protections. One secure area per user flash bank defined with secure non-volatile user option bytes. Default programming is all secure. One secure hide protection or HDP area per bank, stickily hidden after boot by application. Eight kilobytes user pages on the fly defined by the application as secure using volatile secure registers. Default configuration out of reset is non-secure. Additionally, each eight kilobytes user page can be defined on the fly as privileged only using volatile privileged registers. When a page is defined secure, only secure applications can change this property. When Trust Zone is enabled, the secure world can be used to protect critical code against intentional or unintentional tampering from the more exposed code running in the non-secure world. Whether Trust Zone is enabled or not, the Cortex Privilege Mode can be used to protect critical code or data against intentional or unintentional tampering from the more exposed unprivileged code. These resource isolation features were instrumental to obtain the CSEEP Level 3 and PSA Level 3 certification. CSEEP stands for Security Evaluation Standard for IoT Platforms and PSA stands for Platform Security Architecture. On top of the ARM V8M Trust Zone security extension in Cortex M33, the devices embed complementary security features called the Global Trust Zone Controller, or GTZC, that reinforce in a flexible way the isolation between respectively secure non secure worlds and privileged unprivileged worlds. GTZC protects peripherals using registers in the Trust Zone Security Controller, or TZSC. It protects memories using the Memory Protection Controller Block Based, or MPCBB, and the TZSC registers. GTZC can protect against non-secure and optionally unprivileged transactions initiated by masters other than the Cortex M33. Note that some peripherals do not require GTZC to offer secure or privileged protection because they're natively trust-zone-aware and privileged-aware. 
The device lifecycle is managed by the readout protection option byte or RDP. This RDP mechanism is a hardware feature that controls the access to the device debug, test and provision secrets as summarized in this table. The new features around unlocking keys are described in the following slide. Password key-based RDP regressions are available through the debug interface or via the system bootloader. They are ideal for customers that don't want to irreversibly log devices. Two 64-bit keys are defined in embedded flash to independently protect secure OEM1 and non-secure OEM2 application codes as shown. One usage of this is described in the dual developer firmware distribution scheme slide. Note that unlocking the device with a password is only possible once per power cycle. OEM1 key can always be modified when RDP is zero. It can be changed when RDP is 0.5 or 1 if OEM1 log equals 0. OEM2 key can always be modified when RDP is 0 or 0.5. It can be changed when RDP is 1 if OEM2 log equals 0. Through the debug interface, a 32-bit device specific quantity can be read to compute device specific passwords. This method doesn't apply if RDP level is 2 and OEM2 log equals 0. Getting the password will never compromise data confidentiality. It only allows to regress the RDP protection. The device supports the STM32 dual developer firmware distribution scheme. In the single developer scheme, one OEM develops secure and non-secure applications. Both applications must be protected using RDP level 1 or RDP level 2. In the dual developer scheme, the first OEM develops the secure application its associated non-secure callable library and provides a predefined linker file to the second OEM that develops the non-secure application. In the dual developer scheme, the secure application must be protected using RDP level 0.5 after installation. The final non-secure application must be protected using RDP level 1 or RDP level 2. The OTF DEC module decrypts on-the-fly read-only information encrypted in external SPI flash. AES 128-bit cipher in counter mode is used to achieve the lowest possible latency. Four independent and non-overlapping encrypted regions can be defined. For each region, an additional layer of protection can be added on top of the standard AES encryption algorithm requiring the encryption to be done on-chip. When such enhanced protection is selected, only instructions can be stored in the region. OTF DEC also supports an encryption mode available when no decryption is ongoing. All key registers are write-only and automatically erased in the case of tampers or RDP regression. OTF DEC is a trust zone aware peripheral. All rights to its registers must be secure when security is activated in the product by setting TZEN. When PrivBit is set in OTF DEC, only privileged accesses are granted when accessing most of the OTF DEC registers. OTF DEC analyzes all AHB read transfers on the associated AHB bus. If the read request is within one of the four regions programmed, the control logic triggers a keystream computation based on the AES algorithm in counter mode. This keystream is then used to decrypt the data present on the fly in the read transfer from the Octo SPI AHB master. Any access outside the enabled OTF DEC regions belongs to a non encrypted region. As OTF DEC is used in conjunction with Octo SPI, it's mandatory to access the flash memory using the memory mapped mode of the flash controller. The OTF DEC can assert an interrupt to the NVIC for three possible causes security error, key error, execute only or execute while encryption error. Each of these errors has a dedicated flag and an interrupt enable bit. Secure Firmware Install or SFI is a global solution for this STM32 series of microcontrollers allowing secure and counted installation of OEM firmware in untrusted production environments such as an OEM contract manufacturer. When external flash memory is targeted by SFI, the OEM firmware code must be encrypted with a dedicated AES key. This key can be common to a family of products with OEM tools performing the encryption or unique per device with the firmware encrypted inside the device. 
On-chip encryption is mandatory when OTF DEC Enhanced Encryption is selected. For more information, please refer to application node AN4992 for secure firmware install solutions. Thank you for having attended this presentation. You can now refer to the presentations that detail the operation of the STM32U5 security modules. Symmetric cryptography, asymmetric cryptography, hash and random number generation, enhanced anti-tamper, enhanced key storage.